Hey everyone, Community Manager Tyler Nolan here to welcome you to another episode of Citizens of the Stars, where we highlight amazing content created by you, our Star Citizen backers. With that, let's hand it off to Tyler Whitkin and see who he's interviewing for this week's Citizen Spotlight. Hey everyone, and welcome to another installment of Citizen Spotlight, where we take a moment to highlight some of the amazing people within the Star Citizen community. Now joining us this week is someone who many of you are probably already familiar with, the legendary Joran. Joran, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you for asking. Now it's no secret at all that you've made some incredible contributions when it comes to bringing Star Citizens together through Bar Citizens. So let's start with the basics. What is a Bar Citizen? Well, Bar Citizen was originally coined by Michael Moreland back around the original Kickstarter in Austin with Wingman, Ken Shadow, and some other guys having meetups, and they've been doing it ever since. Uh, it's grown since then to cover any gathering of Star Citizen fans from a few nerds in someone's house to dozens or hundreds at restaurants or other venues. Uh, it's not just bars. Very cool. So what is your role when it comes to Bar Citizens? Well, last summer, Great Hit Gamer asked me to set up the Florida Bar Citizen, and with your help and uh, some other nerds, we had over 80 people, and that got me so hyped. Uh, a friend suggested that I start the International Bar Citizen Organizers Discord channel, and that brought in people from around the world uh, who've already been having events, like Chris in England with the Britison Con, and Samilla in Germany with SitCon, and a lot of people who wanted to start their own. So I see my role as helping hype the community and bringing people together in the real world around the stream that we've all got. That's awesome. So what do Bar Citizens mean to you? Bar Citizen has become my overriding passion. It's helping to bring space nerds together all over the world. Uh, it's completely changed my life. And every time I help a new person set up their own event uh, and make new friends, it's just totally amazing. Awesome and well said. Lastly, how can people find out if there's a Bar Citizen happening in their area? Well, we've got a website, barcitizen.sc. Uh, there's an event map, and if there isn't already an event in their area, there's a link to our organizers' Discord channel, and also there's a lot of local Discord channels around many states and countries where people can meet um, other nerds that are already having events, or uh, they can uh, start their own. Either myself or some of the organizers will be happy to help them, show them how to find people and set it up. And there's also the Spectrum Bar Citizen chat channel where myself or some of the other organizers are helping direct people there too. Great, well Joran, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule and coming and talking with me. Up next, let's find out what's going on this week in Star Citizen. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Quantum Questions, the part of our show where we take a real live CIG developer and ask them some of your real live questions. Today we are joined by Mr. Dennis Daniels, who will have to answer as many questions as he can in just two minutes. Let's do this thing. I am joined here today by one of the very best people in the world, Mr. Dennis Daniels. Hey Dennis, how are you today? I'm doing good. You ready to answer some quantum questions? I'm ready to beat everybody else. How many do you think you're going to get? 50. I, I, I would not doubt that. All right, let's do this thing. Can we have two minutes on the clock? And one, two, three, go. What is your name and what do you do? I, my name is Dennis Daniel. I'm the IT manager here at CIG Los Angeles. What is your character class? My character class uh, is Explorer. I like to get out and see new things and see new worlds and destroy aliens. What about in Dungeons and Dragons? A paladin, of course. Now, what is the standard dev machine for Star Citizen? Uh, standard dev machine is a six core i7, running about 32 to 64 gigs of RAM, SSD, and we're trying to get as many new 1080 NVIDIA cards that we can in there to make everything nice and smooth. How do the different dev studios stay in contact? Um, through telepathy. Are we going to get a prospector-style ship for the repair profession? 
Uh, maybe. Um, I've seen some stuff drafted up, but uh, I'll go talk to the guys and see what I can kick them in the gear and get them to do. <laughs> if you just landed your ship on a planet and got out of it, and the first thing you saw was one of those flying spiders, would you fight it, tame it, or just escape? I'd run over it. Favorite operating system? Windows 10. What's the strangest peripheral we've tested Star Citizen with? Uh, the strangest peripheral that we tested Star Citizen with was a Russian HOTUS controller that was pretty bizarre. It had a lot of Russian characters on it, but uh, it actually worked pretty good. Best fast food burger? It is the Carl's Jr. Western Bacon Cheeseburger. Give us a Duke Nukem quote. I'm all out of bubblegum. What is 84 divided by 2? 42. What will be the biggest ship we can buy in the game? Isn't it the Tiger's Claw? When will the Ace Redeemer get a rework? At a time! <laughs> oh, there we go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. There we go. Telepathy, I guess we're gonna give him that one. That is 13 for Dennis, which is not quite a record, but still pretty good. Anyway, um, we will see you next week on Quantum Questions. It will, nope, nope, no, that was good. Yeah, you just go, that, that's fine. <laughs> this week, so <laughs> All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Subconscious, the mini show that lets you know what's going on with the Star Citizen subscription program. I'm Alexis, and I'm here with some news that I think you'll find more than flair. I know that you've all been patiently waiting to hear about the next series of Hangar Flair, and today I'm excited to announce that it is, wait for it, tiny holographic space stations. That's right, true believers. Starting this Friday, you'll find a special hollow table in your hangar. No, it's not that kind of hollow table. This one will display holographic models of space stations from the Star Citizen universe. The first model is one you are all familiar with, the ICC probe from the Stanton system, and future updates will share some of the cool installations that we have in the works. What kind of space stations would you like to see added in the future? Deep space truck stops, orbital artillery sites, Lagrange point transfer stations, those round ones that are in every 1950s sci-fi movie. You can let me know in the subscriber's den and I will pass your suggestions along to the team. And while we're talking about flair, remember that the special Big Benny's machine item will be attributed on Monday of next week. So please make sure you have an active subscription by then if you want to have one in your hangar. You can also look forward to another great issue of Jump Point and a soon to be revealed subscriber town hall later this month. We'll have more details next week and until then, I'll see you in the den. Hey everybody, Community Manager Jared Huckabee here with this week's Top 5 and MVP. Let's get to it. Number 5. This week was April Fool's, and while we didn't have a gag this year here at CIG, our friends at Newegg came through in spectacular style with the world's first nine-screen laptop featuring Star Citizen. Now, I didn't know I needed a G-Sync caps lock and numlock before this, but now I can't imagine going through life without them. So good job, Newegg. Number four, the release of Star Citizen 2.6.2 brought a number of features to Star Citizen, but my favorite was the return of Track IR support. If you've never played a driving, flight, or space sim without Track IR, I personally recommend you check it out. It opens up a whole nother level of immersion when flying through the cosmos. Number three, the Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous subreddits for immortalizing both games in last week's r slash place project. Members from both subreddits banded together to not only add the two logos to the patchwork digital quilt, but defend it from hostile takeovers until the project was locked. It was a delightful show of teamwork and camaraderie that shows the power of space sims in today's modern gaming world. Number two, the next great ship commercial. A fan organized riff on our own next great starship competition, Slayer, TNT, and others came together to start their very own reality-based competition to find the next great ship commercial. The first episode is online now, and I look forward to seeing who wins. And finally, number one in this week's MVP goes to the Star Citizen.it Italian community for organizing a special event in Italy at Modena Play, where they set up eight high-performance gaming rigs, held daily tournaments, and introduced Star Citizen to more than 900 visitors that weekend. So congratulations, Neffer and gang. You're this week's MVP. Back to you, Tyler. Well, that's all for this week's show. 
A big thank you to Jordan and Dennis Daniel for being our guests this week. Now remember, if you want a chance of your own content being featured on this show, you could submit it at the Community Hub on our website. With that, I'll see you in the verse. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.